Apple out of nowhere has just released a brand new iPad Pro. It's got a couple new features that I'm excited to dive into. We'll compare it against its smaller brother, the iPad Air, and we'll obviously be unboxing it. Now this iPad Pro in particular is the two terabyte 13 inch version with the brand new M5 chip, which is basically the main protagonist of this iPad and the Wi-Fi plus cellular version in silver with the nano texture glass display. I've got a lot of feelings and opinions about Apple's new iPads so without further ado, let's open it. Now the design itself hasn't really changed at all. There's one really minor change about it, which I'll show you in just a second. And there it is. Now, before I show you the brand new iPad, let me show you what's inside of the box. So we get the design by Apple in California. And no, we do not get uh, a power brick, which is crazy. We do get um, USB-C port, braided one. And we do get obviously some instructions and something always that's very exciting when buying an iPad Pro with the nano texture glass is this right here. The nano texture glass on the iPad is basically a non-reflective glass for the iPad. And Apple only recommends cleaning that glass, the display with only this polishing cloth right here, which is made for this glass in particular. Now, if you ought to be honest, I've obviously cleaned the nano texture glass with other, nothing really happens. I do use very nice polishing cloth, but it's nice that Apple includes this in the box with a nano texture option. Now it is absolutely amazing that Apple includes this in the box. I'm sad that we do not get a freaking power brick anymore, but we do get a nice polishing cloth. Now this is also something that's brand new to all the EU. Inside of the box, there's the basically the energy label. So how durable it is, how easy it is to repair the water and dust resistance and its battery and um, how much it basically consumes in terms of energy. We obviously get the paperwork that we're always used to. It will basically you know, you know the drill. I don't got to tell you. I don't have to tell you. Okay, so this is the iPad Pro M5 itself. Let's go ahead and open it up. And there is one single, very minimal change about it, which I'll actually show you the iPad and I want you to discover what's new with it. This iPad is gorgeous. There's probably like peak Apple design right here. It's just so gorgeous. And then in the front, we've got that beautiful, extremely large display. This is the 13 inch, so it's it's massive. So what's new with this M5 design is in the back. Can you guess what it is? So previously, we've always had iPad written down right here in gray, and Apple has totally removed it. So we've got this aluminum body with the camera bump. This silver just looks absolutely amazing. Obviously the design of this iPad Pro is just insanely thin. My camera always has such a tough time focusing on this iPad because of how thin it is. I'm actually curious, what's thinner, an iPhone Air or an iPad Pro? It's actually the same. I don't know in terms of millimeters, but it feels like it's pretty much the same, which is kind of amazing that this guy has the M5 chip. All right, let's boot it up so I can show you all of its new features, which aren't much. Us as Apple fans, we're always excited to upgrade from one device to another. All right, our iPad is saying hello to us. Obviously, this iPad Pro isn't worth the upgrade if you're coming from the M4. But that's not what Apple's trying to do here. Now, there were actually tons of rumors that the iPad Pro M5 would have two cameras, one for landscape and one for portrait. Apple has not done that. We still have the camera right in the middle, which is perfect. All right, let me set up the iPad so I can show you all of its new features. All right, so I've now set up the iPad Pro and let me walk you through the major changes that are coming to this iPad, starting off with fast charging, because for the first time ever on an iPad, you'll now be able to charge your iPad to 50% in just 30 minutes, especially an iPad Pro of this size of the 13 inch has such a large battery life. And obviously charging that iPad was always kind of a slow process and whenever you needed to do something quick and it was out of battery life and you needed to use the iPad, well, you were kind of out of luck. But now with fast charging, it's actually a pretty nice upgrade. Also, the iPad Pro has always had 120 hertz, the magical ProMotion display that we all know and love. Now, the thing is with all iPads, including last year's M4 iPad Pro, Whenever you connected it to an external monitor, you never had the option to use an iPad Pro with an external display going up to 120 Hertz. But now, finally, 
you can do that thanks to the M5 chip as well. Apple's also updated its connectivity because the iPad Pro M5 now has Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 6, and Thread support, which is all enabled by Apple's own custom N1 wireless chip. And the cellular models of iPad Pro like this one feature the C1X, which is Apple's own cellular modem for the iPad Pro. Now, why this is such a big deal is because if you take a look at the competition, nobody out there is doing hardware and software together. Usually other companies like Samsung, for example, they make this company run their cameras and this company do their glass and another company is doing their chipsets and another company is doing the hardware. Now, the best thing about Apple and the reason that they simply launch a new iPad with an updated chipset like this version, for example, is because Apple can do that. Apple could just constantly launch new chipsets that every single time they're going miles away from the competition. And the reason that's so amazing is obviously with advanced AI features. Now, obviously we all know it, that Apple intelligence, we all wanted to do more but I wanted to show you one app called Locally AI that basically lets you run Apple's own Apple Foundation model on device. Apart from Apple Foundation, you can do a bunch of different ones, for example, Meta's own or even Google's own um, AI models. But what's cool about this app in particular is that it lets you run on device model by Apple, same model that powers Apple intelligence. And as you can see, it's absolutely incredible. I actually love using this app on my iPhone, especially now that I was traveling and I was actually using my iPhone offline a lot. I could still interact with AI. So I can simply do give me a 10 day itinerary for Bali. And before I tap go, just take a look at how fast not only Apple Foundation is, but the M5 chip as well and, and how well it runs on device. Check it out. Three, two, one, go just extremely fast. And the best thing about this, once again, is that it's doing it on device, which is incredible for multiple reasons, obviously for using it offline, but two for privacy reasons. This answer right here didn't go to the cloud. It stayed with Apple's own very powerful chipset. Now, if you tap right here, you could still change it to all the different models that you can choose from. And the M5 chip will obviously run all of them incredibly fast. As you can see, you've even got Gemma 3, Gemma 3N. Now, these models right here are obviously not massive models, but they're way much more than enough for 90% of people, especially once again, running it on device. And there's also tons of Apple intelligence features that I've obviously showed you in the channel before, including, for example, the image wand, which will basically allow you to simply circle a drawing, for example, in this case of a flower. You could even describe it some more info feed it in and it will automatically generate an image for you. Now, this obviously for students is so useful. And once again, the M5 chip is just an absolute powerhouse. Now, according to Apple, the AI performance is up to 3.5 times faster than the M4 chip. And as I said in the beginning, in the day to day life, the results that you're basically going to get from this chipset is from very advanced AI workloads like the locally AI app that I was just showing you about from writing tools or from other extremely advanced advanced apps in the app store from very simple tags, like creating a Genmoji of a flying pig and it will literally generate it in less than two seconds. So that's what's new. It basically brings everything that you still love about the iPad Pro and pushes it even more. You've still got the best display that Apple has ever put, not only on an iPad, but also ever. You've got the Ultra Retina XDR, which will basically give you 1600 nits of peak brightness, which is incredible for an iPad. And then you take that with the nano texture glass option. The nano texture glass is obviously not for everybody. I said this last year in my review. I actually used the iPad Pro with the nano texture glass on the airplane and it was extremely sunny and I was actually looking at the person sitting right next to me and he had like so many reflections and he actually kept like moving his tablet because you know that's what we do right and I was just sitting there with my iPad Pro with tons of sun and there was like barely any reflection which was a really good thing about it. another thing that I love about it is how it feels while writing on your Apple Pencil. It's not as good. It's not as obvious as like a matte screen protector as a paper like screen protector. It is more frictiony, which makes it really satisfying and it it doesn't feel like paper, but it kind of feels like paper. It does get very smudgy. That's where having something like this comes in very handy. But if you're someone that likes to take your iPad outdoors a lot, nano texture is obviously a must have for you. HDR movies look amazing on this iPad as well. 
It's just the quality that you get out of this display is obviously incredible. I don't know if it's easy to tell on camera, but the blacks are absolutely perfect. They're so dark and the whites get very bright, basically giving you a very satisfying experience. It just looks incredible. You've also got incredible speakers that just sound so spatial. It sounds so loud. In terms of cameras, you still get that 12 megapixel center stage camera. So if you FaceTime somebody, it will track you and follow you around. And it's obviously extremely wide. In the back, you get a 12 megapixel wide camera. You get one single camera lens, which does support smart HDR4. You get a LiDAR scanner that basically makes any AR experience extremely reliable. And this right here is an ambient light sensor that will give you even better automatic screen brightness. So when you go to a library, it will kind of tone it down. And then if you take it outdoors, it will bring up the brightness. That is how the iPad does that. You've got the flash and another microphone, which by the way, you've got four studio quality microphones all combined. Which by the way, if you wanna know how the microphones sound on the iPad Pro with the studio quality microphones, this is how it sounds like. Now you've got support for wide and voice isolation mode, which I'll show you in just a second, which will basically dynamically include or exclude ambient noise for better audio. You can also transcribe conversations just like this. As you can see, it's automatically transcribing me and it's doing it pretty much instantly. Once again, thanks to the powerful M5 chip. And then once you're done, as you can see, you can tap on enhance recording and it will sound even better. Now, apart from all the specs, what makes the iPad Pro a true Mac replacement for a lot of people is actually iPad OS 26. And it brings so many incredible changes. For example, window management for the first time ever coming to the iPad. Apple has totally redesigned the windowing experience, which is just amazing the way that it works. You can pretty much place windows anywhere you want on your display. And then if you simply do like this, it will kind of split screen your iPad. You've also got full on menu bars, just like on the Mac. So you can do everything that you know and love with menu bars, including all of your settings. For example, in Safari, you can create a new window and a new tab, just like on the Mac. iPad OS 26 also brings the traffic light buttons on the Mac to the iPad, so you can close something. You can also minimize something, and if you wanna open it back again, you can do that or you've got the green one to bring it full screen. iPad OS 26 also brings the beautiful new liquid glass UI to the iPad and it's all over the UI. So if on Apple Music, for example, you've got that beautiful satisfying buttons right there and the buttons are actually translucent as you can see. As I move these colorful artworks, it will actually move right under it, which is just so satisfying and so beautiful. Also, one of my favorite examples is inside of the Apple TV app, as you can see, these buttons right here are extremely translucent and they react like liquid glass. Obviously that's the name of it. Apple has also highly improved the files app. They actually brought a list view just like on the Mac, which you can also change the date modified if you want it right there, which you can also add, for example, the type of kind of file and you can actually move it like the little menu bars, just like this. You can highly customize it. You can also add the size. You can add the date you added that file. You can also customize the folders now. So if you tap on customize folder and tags and change the tag, you can actually change the folder color. For example, we can turn the that orange and you can even add little icons like this to your folders. There's tons of them and if you don't find the right one, you can even add your own emoji to it. For example, this is my filming assets one. So we can type in film and we can tap on this one right here. Boom, that looks incredible. Apple's also added a couple new apps to the iPad. For example, the phone app. We now have a full on phone app, which we never had before. We had the contacts and FaceTime but we now have phone. Apple's also added the journal app to the iPad and even the preview app that we know and love from the Mac to the iPad, which is basically the best way to open PDFs on iPad now. I made an entire video about iPad OS 26, over a hundred new features. If you want to check that out, it will obviously be linked down below. Now the iPad Pro M5 obviously also comes with incredible accessories like the Apple Pencil Pro, which is obviously the must have if you have an iPad Pro. The Apple Pencil Pro has tons of features. For example, the squeeze gesture that will basically bring you to this beautiful um, tool palette. So you can quickly switch between different tools. You've got the barrel roll feature. So as you can see, as I twist my iPad, 
I'm actually getting different widths. The Apple Pencil Pro also has Apple Find My, so if you do lose it in a library, you'll know exactly where you left it the last time. Now, apart from the Apple Pencil Pro, you've also got the Magic Keyboard, which will give you a full-on function roam, a haptic trackpad, another USB-C port, incredible clicky keys, and so much more. Now, something else that we have to discuss about is should you buy an iPad Pro or an iPad Air? It is very hard for me to recommend an iPad Pro to somebody, not because because this isn't capable of, it's actually too powerful for most people. So unless you're a creative that truly pushes the limits of this extremely advanced display, we're talking that this iPad Pro literally has reference mode. So you can literally display reference color for popular color standards such as HDR, SDR, video formats, so if you're a pro, you know what that means. An iPad Air is also an extremely powerful iPad that also has a beautiful design that also comes with all the Apple Pencil, the Magic Keyboards, the Apple Intelligence features. Now here's why you should buy an iPad Pro over an iPad Air. The iPad Pro has a way higher brightness, got an OLED display compared to an LCD display. iPad Pro has ProMotion, 120 Hertz. You've also got Face ID compared to Touch ID on the iPad Air, which is honestly amazing. It feels so good to simply unlock your iPad instead of constantly needing to put your finger on the power button, which isn't a big deal. But on the iPad Pro, you just don't think about it. Just simply open it up. That having Face ID truly makes a difference, but obviously not game changing. The iPad Pro is also thinner. You've got light arm and you can max it out to two terabytes compared to one terabyte, the iPad Pro simply keeps pushing the limits on what an iPad can do year after year. If you want to watch my review of the iPad Air, you can tap on this video right here. Or if you're still undecided on which iPad you should buy, iPad mini, iPad, iPad Air, or iPad Pro, you can tap on this. Hit subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.